So the minimum effective dose, if you're doing nothing, is not that much. You, you're going to get huge benefits when you, you know, go from nothing to probably three hours a week. That would be an enormous improvement. Um, so maybe that's, you know, I don't know if that's the right way to think about it. Um, well, let's, maybe let's just start there. So let's say someone starts at nothing. So you're saying, okay, start at three hours a week. How are you breaking that out? You know, I think you'd have to put probably an hour of that into steady state aerobic training zone two. Mm -hmm. I think you'd have to put an hour of that into strength training. I think you'd probably want to put 20 minutes of that or 30 minutes of that across one or two sessions into high intensity aerobic training. Um, so not hit intervals by the way, but you know, sort of the longer intervals that are VO2 max appropriate. And then the remainder of that time, call it another, you know, 30 or 40 minutes spread out at 10 minutes a day into some of the stability training. And again, I think it's important to, to understand you're better off. If you say, look, I'm only willing to devote 60 minutes a week to this stability stuff, which seems so boring. Should I just blast it out in one one hour session? The answer is no. You're better off doing 10 minutes a day, six days a week. There's really something to the neurologic pattern that comes from practicing your IAP, practicing your breathing, your scapular cars, your cat cow exercises. Um, doing that for 10 minutes every day is better off than just trying to do it all in one shot. Um, so, so anyway, that's probably how I would structure a three hour um, uh, program. And for the, on the stability side, um, you kind of mentioned a few exercises there and actually what you and Beth did is we recorded those videos of you in the gym. And so those are available, peteratiamd.com slash outlive slash videos. And so anyone who wants to learn more about, okay, what are those stability exercises that I could do 10 minutes a day, real short, real simple videos, um, you can go check them out. So we won't spend time double clicking on those because as you've stated before, it's you really have to see it to understand it as opposed to just hearing about it. Um, and so let's say then someone, you know, is like, okay, I'll start with three hours a week. How often do you ratchet that up? Does that get increased every week? Does it get increased every month? Is it when certain milestones are hit? Well, it depends what the limiting factor is. So usually when a person starts at three hours per week, it's because that's the only time they're willing to put into it. Um, now, conversely, if a person's never lifted a finger and they say, oh my God, like I'm willing to do whatever it takes and they only start at three hours a week because you don't want to injure them, then you're in that situation where how much can you ratchet it up? And I'd probably ratchet a person up every six weeks in a scenario like that. But I think the far more typical scenario is, okay, I'm willing to do three hours. I do three hours a week. <clears throat> usually a person sort of starts to habituate to that stress. Um, and one of the important uh, principles of training is a principle that m most people have heard of called progressive overload. So in one way or another, the training, the load, the, the ask needs to get more complicated, needs to get more difficult. So <clears throat> if you're talking about strength training, that could mean heavier weight. That could mean more reps, more sets, less rest between, other things that make it more complicated, such as using BFR. So, you know, we're always looking for ways to make this more demanding. And for example, at my stage now, I'm not adding time anymore. Like I don't, I am at the limits of how much I'm willing to spend on this. My kids are young. Every minute I'm doing that, I'm not spending time with them or I'm not, you know, working or, you know, I'm just falling behind in some other area of my life. So, you know, I'm already spending about as much time as I'm willing to spend in the gym. And it's, you know, probably on the strength side, six hours a week. Um, so I have to find other ways to, to add that demand. Um, the other thing I would be doing is thinking about where the deficits are. So let's say you have that person that's at three hours per week. Maybe their ALMI is already at the 70th percentile and they're actually reasonably strong, but their aerobic training is an atrocity. So then I'm going to disproportionately add to that as opposed to just equally build all of them. Conversely, you know, we have a patient in our practice uh, who's, you know, upon entering the practice, I mean, this guy's VO2 max was probably above 60 and he is 60, um, but he's been a lifelong runner. 
So, but he never touched a weight in his life. So he has, you know, very little muscle mass. And, um, you know, this is a guy who we're actually saying, look, you probably, we're probably going to need you to run a little bit less. <laughs> and, you know, your running is amazing and you're very fortunate that you haven't been injured doing it. We want you to keep running as long as you can. But we also have to address some of these other issues because you do have some of the really common issues of runners. Mm -hmm.